just want to clarify a few things for y'all uh, in the video that's about to follow. Um, several times throughout the video, you'll hear me talking about uh, these emails. Uh, these emails, of course, were prepared by Dr. Stephen M. Pastilnik. And um, you're going to hear me talk about the email, the contents of the emails. And Dr. Pastilnik saying that the main cause of death, main cause of death was still the beating and asphyxia. But you're going to hear me say Dr. Downs. Uh, Dr. Downs is actually the pathologist who conducted the second autopsy. His autopsy was completed January 5th, 2001, whereas Dr. Dr. Pastilnik, his autopsy was completed um, August 3rd, 1999. There's Dr. Pastilnik's signature there, and this is his autopsy, including asphyxia. So, um, and of course, we have Dr. Downs, like I showed you. His autopsy was completed January 5th. He concluded that um, the cause of death was gunshot. So he said it was gunshot, wound to the neck right there. Gunshot, wound to the neck. Uh, one of the things I wanted to point out to y'all, you know, it's a lot of um, unanswered questions about this second autopsy. There's a lot of uh, you're going to see in the video, they're lying about where the information came from that caused them to do what you call an exhumation, which is where they went and pulled the body out of the ground, as you see, over a year later, and performed a second autopsy. Now, when you get to Dr. Downs' report, uh, you're going to see something, you know, like I said, uh, the, the victim in this case was killed in March of 1999. This autopsy was performed January 5th, 2001. And on the first page of the autopsy, you see right here, I got it highlighted. He said that he found fresh blood is associated with the wound track. That's the highlighted part right here, the wound track, fresh blood. So he's saying that almost two years later, when he went to do the second autopsy, he found fresh blood associated with the wound track. And uh, I'm not a doctor. And uh, I don't need to be a doctor to know that you're not gonna find fresh blood two years later uh, when you're manufacturing a cause of death. So just uh, keep that information in mind. And most important, just remember, I misspoke a couple of times and I was saying, Dr. Downs, when I was talking about asphyxia and beating and these emails and, and whatnot, and it's actually Dr. Pastilnik who was saying that um, beating and asphyxia is the cause of death. And it's Dr. Downs who they were able to go and get from wherever they got him from and got him to collaborate with them to change the cause of death. And it's Dr. J.C. Upshot Downs. So just to clarify those facts and uh, everything else pretty much speaks for itself. Thanks. Uh, continuing on with the uh, Wrongful Convictions Alabama series. I'm going to be uh, presenting today on uh, an indictment in my case, the indictment process uh, as it deals with um, my wrongful conviction. Uh, a couple of steps that were involved. And before I get started, I want to remind everyone of something that uh, Chris Hedges said. He said, in America's criminal justice system, you have all these procedures in place. You got uh, the warrant magistrate to get an arrest warrant. Then you have the initial appearance where you appointed a counsel. And then you have the grand jury process where you are indicted by a grand jury. And then you have the trial or you select a jury and the jury sits there and then the, the, the case proceeds to trial. And um, he said when people look at that, it presents the perception that all of these layers of protection are in place so that when you take in a person's constitutional rights away, uh, when you're taking a person's freedom and liberty away, when you're depriving them of uh, their 
for manhood, womanhood, childhood, uh, for the purpose of putting us in these dungeons, these slave plantations. He said, when all these procedures in place, people perceive of a, of a fine tool system uh, where, all of, where all of the protections that are needed are there. But the reality is these systems exist on paper. Uh, there is no integrity to most of them. Uh, that's what causes a wrongful conviction. Uh, the lack of integrity and the lack of accountability. We know that prosecutors have immunity from basically anything that they do in the courtroom. Uh, we know judges have immunity uh, from anything that they're doing. Uh, you know, so you can't hold anyone accountable. If the prosecutor commits misconduct and you can prove it, you can get uh, a new trial, your conviction overturned, but you cannot hold him accountable because of prosecutorial immunity. Um, we'll be talking about the indictments in my case. And I say plural because I have two. Uh, this is the first indictment uh, that was issued in my case. Uh, it is indictment number, um, grand jury number 555A and um, SID number 01064314. And um, it was issued May 12th of 2000, May the 12th, 2000. Uh, and it charges that the grand jury of said county charged that before the finding of an indictment, Melvin Ray, also known as Marvin Ray, whose name is unknown to the grand jury other than as stated, did intentionally cause the death of another person, to wit, Andre Horton, by asphyxiating him by placing a plastic bag over his head or other means unknown to the grand jury in violation of section 138-6-2 of the Code of Alabama against the peace and dignity of the Code of Alabama. Then, page three of the indictment, um, you have a list of all the witnesses. Uh, Brent Patterson, Blake Dorning, Jim Cook, Charles Berry, Perrion Roberts, Carmen Green, Jeff Malone, Steve, Stephen Pastilnik, Mary Hope. Uh, these are the witnesses uh, at this proceeding when I was indicted. Um, as you all know, after this indictment was issued um, May 12th, um, the prosecutor in my case filed this motion right here. Filed this motion in June, and it is a motion to exhumation. And they were saying that they wanted to exhume the body of the deceased because it says the follow up investigation re revealed information that the victim was shot in the back of the head. And they said that, uh, uh, they needed to, it is essential for the administration of justice to determine whether information regarding possible gunshot is accurate. Um, so the judge held a hearing on that motion on, in July, and on July 31st, he issued the order on the motion, granting the motion to exhume. He said the court having considered the motions as filed, the presentations of arguments by counsel, and the in all parties, it is ordered that the motion to exhume the body be in is hereby granted. Okay, uh, as I told y'all, at that time, and you can go to my trial transcript, go to page 687, and you'll see at that time, they were saying that the co-defendant is the person that provided them with the information that caused them to file the motion to exhume. That's what they were saying at that time, all right? When the co-defendant testified at trial, he said that he was not in contact with them at that time. He was not communicating. He said he didn't agree to become a state witness until January of 2001. And these all these events occurred beginning in June of 2000. And he said he was not communicating with them at that time. Well, at trial, the prosecutor attempted to argue for the jury that the reason why the second autopsy exhumation was done was because the co-defendant had provided. And this right here is page 687 is when my lawyer objected to that saying, we object because that's not what was testified to at trial. All right. So the, the trial court overruled the objection. When we got on appeal, my appellate attorney raised the issue that the prosecutor had engaged in misconduct, that he had attempted to attribute and in 
embellish the credibility. Oh, hold on. Okay. Um, I had to get a document. I realized I had forgotten an important document. So the trial court, we're on appeal. The lawyers, uh, we've appealed. And we were saying that it was misconduct. The prosecutor was trying to uh, testify to the credibility of their witness. And we argued on appeal that their comments that they were suggesting to the jury that he was the reason why the second um, autopsy was performed was misconduct, was misrepresentation of the facts. Um, the prosecutor argued on appeal. This is what the prosecutor argued on appeal. This is a copy of their brief on appeal, page 43 um, on the appeal. And uh, this is what they argued. The appeal number is CR021766. Look at the appellate brief, and you will see that this is what they argued. They said, no, I'm sorry, this is from the this is from the opinion. This is from the court's opinion. It says, it says, the evidence at trial revealed that Fred Bass gave statements to investigators. But the question is when? But now I say, thus it is a reasonable inference for the state to argue that Bass's statements were the reason for the second autopsy to determine if Horton's death had been caused by a gunshot wound. And thus, the trial court did not abuse its discretion in overruling Ray's objection. That's what the court said. Okay. Now, after they had appealed, after the, the court overruled, um, my appellate attorney didn't raise all the facts. So I went back and raised it on post-conviction, and I showed that the state was attempting to make this argument even though their witness had denied being the person that gave the information. So I argued prosecutor misconduct. This is what the prosecutors argue in their appellate brief on post-conviction. They said, Dr. Downs, the pathologist who conducted the second autopsy, testified that his interest in re-autopsying the body was the result of inquiries made by Huntsville Area law enforcement authorities. These law enforcement officials related that they were receiving information from the street contradicting the original autopsy conclusion that Horton had been asphyxiated. They did not specify from whom the information had come. They did not have to. So the state changed their argument from the co-defendant, from saying that the co-defendant was the one to when they were caught in a lie. Now they're trying to say the investigators received it from the street and they didn't say who they received it from and they didn't have to. Now, remember, when I went before the first grand jury, all of these people, all of these witnesses testified about asphyxiation. Okay. Now, all of a sudden, on December the 8th, the year 2000, they came with a second indictment. Second indictment, grand jury number 225A, SID number 01064314. And this is what this one charges. The grand jury of said county charged that before the find us indictment, Melvin Ray, whose name is unknown to the grand jury other than the state, did intentionally cause the death of another person to wit Andre Horton by shooting him with a pistol in violation of section 1380 code of Alabama against the peace and dignity. Now here's the first sign that something is wrong. The exact same witnesses that are listed on the first indictment are the same witnesses that are listed on the second autopsy. Y'all see the names there? Now pay attention to this name right here, Dr. Stephen Postilli. This is the doctor who performed the first autopsy. He performed the first autopsy. The one that concluded asphyxiation. Now here's the witness list from the first indictment. And as I said, the same witnesses. The same people. All right. And there you see Dr. Prestilnik's name again on both on both um, indictments. 
Okay. Well, I contacted Dr. Fastilli after trial. I'm going to get to what he said in just a moment, but I'm going to speak to the first part of what he said. He said, this is the email that he sent. This is the email. You see his name at the top. From Fastilli. From Stephen Fastilli. He said, when the DA in Madison County spoke to me some months after the autopsy and stated that he had two defendants, one of whom was adamant and unswerving about the other guy shooting the deceased, he referred to my autopsy. There it goes again. When they were seeking to get the body exhumed, the district attorney, I have two co-defendants, one of whom is adamant and unswerving about the other guy shooting the deceased. This was when he was lying from the jump. And we found out later on after we exposed the lie, then they come back and say investigators were receiving it from the street. So they went from, we know they told this pathologist that Fred Bass was the one who told them that. We know that at the exhumation hearing that he told the judge he told me, he told my counsel that it was Fred Bass. We know that he told potentially the second grand jury that it was Fred Bass. But so now that means he has lied constantly saying Fred Bass is the person. And they lied on appeal. On the original appeal, they said Fred Bass was the one that provided them that information. And you can go back and look at the appealee brief on the original appeal and you'll see that they're saying that. Okay, now, as I showed y'all, in December, I got stuff everywhere now. December 8th is when I was re-indicted for gunshot. December 8th. Alright, the problem with that is, the first problem with that is, the autopsy that they, that they finally were able to get to say gunshot, it was not completed until January the 5th, 2001. January 5th, 2001. To Honorable Tim Morgan. This is from Dr. Downs, the one who performed the second autopsy. His autopsy wasn't complete until January 5th, 2001. They already had an indictment a month in advance of the autopsy report. Already done went and told the jury, well, it's this, and don't even have an autopsy report. So they got the indictment first, and then went and got the evidence to support it. And lied about it. About Fred Bass, the one provided provide it to me. Okay? Now, so, this is uh, the day of trial. January 22nd, page, I'm going to be reading from page 18 and 19. Today is January 22nd, 2001. We are here at this time, approximately 350 in the case of State of Alabama Prosecutor Member. Are you Melvin Ray? Yes. All right, sir. What is your age today? 29. You are charged by indictment number, indictment in this case, uh, with the offense of murder. Do you understand that? Yes. Now, page 19, this is what the judge said. Let me make sure y'all see that. I'm going to read this part right here. All right. It says, there have been two indictments. One has been amended. I have the amended indictment in front of me. It was issued by the 2000 term of the Madison County Grand Jury. Have you reviewed that indictment with your attorney? That's what he asked me. But as you can see, my attorney didn't allow me to answer. This is what my attorney said. He said, it was present in court and he has seen it. And you are here with your attorney, yes, to this particular charge. I will read briefly and I will ask you how you plead. And have you reviewed your plea? And have you reviewed your plea with your attorney so you can enter a plea? This is what I said. No, sir. I had not reviewed my plea. I was not aware that they had re-indicted me. I found this out the day I'm walking in the courtroom finna go to trial. For two years, I'm preparing to go to trial. Murder by asphyxiation. The day I walk in the courtroom, they're going to change the cause of death. 
They done lied about where they got the information from. They done got a re-indictment issued against me. Got a second autopsy report. And I find all this out when I walk into the courtroom on December 9th. That's when I found out that I had been re-indicted. Okay. Now, you heard the judge say, there has been an amendment to your indictment. Okay. I'm going to read from you the statutes in the state of Alabama dealing with indictments and amendments to indictments. These two statutes right here, 158.130. You see 158.131 says new indictment. All right. As for permission of the court, an indictment must not be quashed, dismissed, discontinued, or abandoned without the permission of the court, and such permission must be entered on the record. That's what it says. An indictment must not be quashed, dismissed, without the court. And such must be entered on the record. Now you heard the judge say, this is what the judge said. One has been amended, but the indictment was not amended. They re-indicted, be that as it may. Now, I'm going to read you 158131. 158131. I'm going to read that to you. Y'all can see it for yourself. You can pull the statue up. This is what it says. When a judgment is arrested or an indictment quashed on account of any defect therein, but it was because it was not found by a grand jury, grand jury regularly organized because it charged no offense or for any other cause, the court may order another indictment to be preferred for the offense charged or intended to be charged. And in such case, an entry of record must be made setting forth the facts. Last part of that. An entry of record must be made setting forth the facts. That's what it says right here. An entry of record. Now, I just showed y'all the record. Do you see an entry made setting forth facts as to why I was re-indicted? One has been amended. That's all they said. Does not set forth any facts about why they took this first one. Out. Whatever they did, whether you want to call it amended, re-indictment, whatever. They did not make any interest statement why. This, the statute said they must get consent from the court. And we see that they didn't get any consent. All right. Got paper strong everywhere. But back to Dr. Downs' email. Back to Dr. Downs' email. Dr. Downs said, First thing he said, he said, we have prepared an affidavit for him to sign based on statements that he had made. He said, this is where I'll be reading from right here. If y'all can see that, I'm going to be reading from, let's see, right here. He said, that affidavit was strange. I won't sign it as it stands. If you want to take my deposition on the record, I hear that's okay. I stand by my conclusions. I stand by my conclusions. He said, coupled that, there were no significant injuries or injuries around the wound and no major vascular injuries. And he's saying that the cause of death was beating. That's what he's saying. He said, also, this is also what he said. He said there was no blood in the head or neck and no injuries to the major vessel. But this is something else that he said that I think is really going to tell the story. This is where I'll be reading from right here where my finger is at. Can y'all see that? Yeah, y'all should be able to see that. Y'all should be able to see that. Okay, this is what he said. He said, 
I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna start right there. He said, if you want to investigate the other pathologists, start with the district attorney in the state, all of whom, along with the attorney general, supported a bill to fire him. I have no animosity toward the DA either. They were duped by him as well as the rest of the state. Also, also, your client's first defense team should have realized the game being played and not have allowed it. The game being played and not have allowed it. That's what Dr. Stephen M. Postilnik said. And he can be found at the University of Texas Medical Branch. That's where he's employed right now to this day as the chief medical examiner. And so, how did they secure this indictment? There was no entry in the record explaining what they were doing as the statute required. There was no permission on the record to get rid of the original indictment. They did not set forth any facts about this second indictment. So is the second, is the indictment legitimate? Am I legitimate? Was I prosecuted under a legitimate indictment? Was it secured by fraud? The prosecutors is telling me. Prosecutor told Dr. Stephen M. Pastilli. When the DA of Madison County spoke to me months after the autopsy study, he had two defendants. Stated that he had two defendants, one of whom was adamant and unswerving about the other guy shooting the deceased. That's what he told Dr. Down. That's also what he told my attorney. Go to 688 of my trial transcript. That's what he told my attorney. That's what he told the judge at the exhumation hearing. That's what he told the second grand jury in order to get the second indictment for gunshot. But when the co-defendant said, that's even what they told the Court of Criminal Appeals on direct appeal. That's what they told the Court of Criminal Appeals on direct appeal. The co-defendant the one provide. But when the co-defendant denied and said, I ain't tell you that. I don't know where you got that from. They changed it. This is the appeals brief post conviction. This is the post conviction number CR 021766. And they changed their statement. They, they done got caught in a lie and saying, okay, it went from the path from the district attorney telling Dr. Downs and all of us that Fred Bass told him that to now. Dr. Downs, the pathologist who conducted the sex autopsy, testified that his interest in real time was a result of inquiries made by Huntsville Law Authority. These law enforcement officials related they were receiving information from the street, no longer from Bats, contradicting the original autopsy conclusion. They did not specify from whom the information had came. They did not have to. To this day, still on run. Yet, I'm being held on this indictment. This is the indictment I was trying. They didn't get permission from the court. There is no entry of the record setting forth any facts. There was no compliance with the law, like Chris Head has stated. It's all, it's all a sham. These statutes, they read well. But I want to know, who is this person? And what's up with this indictment? How do you get this indictment without complying with the law because these statutes require for me to be in court and for the facts to be put on the court for witnesses to get on the witness stand so they can say this is the reason why your honor and the honor can say I grant permission or I deny permission these are the reasons why I grant permission and set forth the fact they never did that to this day that first indictment is still pending they never have gotten permission from the court to dismiss it, to quash it. It's just pending. They never set forth any facts 
stating why they saw a second indictment. And we see them lying about where this information came from. And so I just wanted to put this information out here about this indictment uh, so people can understand what the challenges are in, in, in fighting justice uh, under mass incarceration. You know, uh, it's more than just proving your innocence because it's more than just proving that your constitutional rights have been violated. It's trying to get people with integrity to actually judge impartially because it's so clear that the prosecutor lied. It's so clear. I got five instances where you have said you receive information from Fred Bass, which caused you to re-exhume, to pull this man's body out of the ground after it has already been buried, autopsy, and an indictment. Autopsy already complete by Dr. Downs. Indictment already issued by the Madison County Grand Jury. And now you're fixing to undo all of that because you're saying you have a critical, important witness who has come forward with new facts about the cause of death. You know why they came with new facts about the cause of death? Because the first cause of death, asphyxiation, and the facts that they were relying on when the reports and the forensic people came back with the evidence, it didn't support their case. Oh, Melvin Ray didn't do it. We don't have no evidence. We can't prove anything. So what will we do? Asphyxiation. Asphyxiate. A beating. Dr. Donald said asphyxiation and beating caused the death. That's what Dr. Down said. The main cause of death was still beating and asphyxiation. Okay, so there's going to be some evidence of a beating. And you're going to find Melvin Ray's DNA. You're going to find uh, bodies of fluids. You're going to find evidence that Melvin Ray beat someone. But then the evidence come back. And you can't find that. So now you have to change the cause of death. Okay, so how are you going to make your case? He shot. Now there is no physical evidence. So now you can explain why there is no physical evidence connecting Melvin Ray to this crime. And then with the gunshot, we already know they lied about the gunshot. They had Fred Bass testify a 9mm. They had Dr. Downs their doctor in their pocket testify nine millimeter. They had these police officers testify nine millimeter and come to find out the whole time they're withholding, withholding the uh, ballistics memorandum showing that the man was not killed with the nine millimeter. One lie on top of another. Go to the videos, nine millimeter or 380 and you'll see the ballistics memorandum. Hold on, I'm finna get it for you. Here you go. Ulysses Memorandum. 380. That's what they said. 380. Now let me show you Bass' testimony. Here's Bass' testimony. Two guns. A 357, 9mm. Prosecutor. Action. And the 9mm. And the 9mm. Is that the is that the one? You said the one you testified to the jury as far as the one he killed Andre with? Yeah. That's the one. Okay. So, you lying about this indictment. So, where you get this shit from? Fred Bassa, he ain't tell you. So, where you get this shit from? You know? Why you lying about the caliber of weapon that was used? Why you feeding this false information to the jury? And so why I can't find out today who this person from the street, who the officer was, when they got in contact with him, what did they say? Did they say, officer, um, I was involved with that murder and my conscience is I, I killed him. I was with uh, Fred Bass or, or whoever. What did they say? 
How did they know that this man had been? How did they know that this man had been shot? So you say, when we got an autopsy report saying the man died from asphyxiation. That's the part I want the answer to. How did they know that? Where did they get such information from? And who were they that their testimony, their statement was so strong, it was strong enough to overcome all the witnesses who testified before the grand jury, the first one. It was strong enough to overcome the grand jury's finding and the indictment. How, how, who, who is this person to pull up and say, hey, man, uh, the cause of death wrong. It wasn't asphyxiation. He was shot, gunshot, shot in the back of the head. How did they say they found that out is what I want to know. To make y'all exhume the body, do a second autopsy, get a second indictment. Who is this person? And what the what did they say? Because it should be a statement on it. They won't tell me who it was. They won't tell me when they pulled up with this. They won't tell me how police got in contact with them. They won't tell me who the officer is that received the information. They won't tell me anything. The reason why is because I got a mountain of lies from when they were saying it was Fred Bass. And I got five people to say he told us it was Fred Pass. I just showed you one of them a second ago. Dr. Downs in his autopsy. I mean, in his uh, email. That's the first thing he said. First thing Dr. Downs said, the first time we got in contact with him. When the DA contacted me after the autopsy, he had two defendants, one of whom was Adam and Unswer. So we know he said Fred Bass was the one who did. And now we know Fred Bass didn't do it. So, man, let's. let's I want justice, man. I want justice. See, they don't expect for us to come down here and keep fighting. It's been 18 years of my life that has been taken away from me. When I left my daughter, my son was five. My daughter was seven. Now I have a granddaughter that's five. That's how long I've been gone. My seven-year-old daughter has now become an adult. My five-year-old son has become an adult. My daughter has had my first grandchild. She's five years old now. She's the same age as my youngest child was when they took me from me. I'm all these lies. You know? And so I won't just, and they think I'm going to lay down. I don't care. These testimonies that I'm making on these videos, they're going to live forever. They're going to live forever. Somebody going to be able to fight my cause forever. That's why I'm making these videos. Because I know how the judicial system works. Because if the criminal justice system was about integrity and due process, I would not be sitting here doing this interview because you just saw for yourself they lied. I don't even know how he secured the second indictment. The reason why I showed you that all the witnesses were the same was for this reason. If the same witnesses testified at the first grand jury that it was asphyxiation, and the same witnesses testified at the second grand jury, then someone changed their testimony. They won't tell me who that was. Someone had to change their testimony at the second. That means that that is a, a inconsistent statement. Someone has contradicted themselves. And I should have access to that, to know who it is that gave these two different statements. They won't tell me that. They won't tell me anything, but I'm entitled to it. And so that's why I make these videos, because I want justice. You know, they have not, you seen the record, they didn't set forth any facts the way the statute requires to secure a second night. I didn't write the statute. I did not write the statute. I didn't write these statutes. The Alabama legislature did. The statute says that an entry of record must be made setting forth the fact. Go to this public record. Go and see if you can find the entry record setting forth the facts as to why a new indictment was preferred. That's what it said. New indictment. The last line. They ain't doing it. The prosecutor did what he wanted to do. Dr. Downs said, my attorneys, my first defense team should have recognized the game being played and not have a lie. We know something is wrong because... Because of this. 
This is why we know something is amiss. How to prosecute and get an indictment on December 20th. What is it? At? No, December 8th. How you can get an indictment on December 8th for gunshot? And the autopsy ain't completed until January the 5th. And he don't get it in his office until January the 10th. That's the, the, the dis attorney stamp. So you ain't get this until January the 10th. So how you were able to already have an indictment December? On the 8th of December of 2000. And you didn't get the autopsy report to 2001. It's something that went wrong, something that went on in these grand jury proceedings that I don't know about. And that's what I'm trying to find out what y'all do. Who y'all had on the grand jury? Who's somebody doing something wrong? Why the judge, why it wasn't done in court, in open court, so that the judge can make an entry of record explaining why he was allowing this to happen? Everything was done behind the scenes. No one knows anything. Don't even know who the person was that gave them the information. Everything was done in secret. Who was the district attorney working with? Robert Lee Brazil and Ingrid Lunsford. And who was the officer? You lying on so many people. First you lied on Fred Bass. When Fred Bass did not, now you lying on everybody else. You just saying law enforcement. You ain't even naming nobody no more. Got it from people from the street. We don't, what does that mean? People from the street, anybody can just walk up off the street. Oh, yeah, he called the death wrong, it's gunshot. How can someone from the street just walk up like that? It ain't had enough. I want the truth. I want y'all to help me find the truth. I want y'all to help me to discover what is really going on in this case. Why is Dr. D uh, D uh, Pastilne saying my first defense team should have realized the game being played and not allowed it? What game? This is real life. This is 18 years of my life. So I want to know what the game is. What game? What game is he talking about? What game is he talking about? And your client's first defense team should have realized the game being played. And your client's first defense team should have realized the game being played. The game being played and not have allowed it. What game, man? What kind of game y'all playing with this cause of death? Fred Bass told him. Fred Bass told him. Oh, well, you proved us wrong on that. Well, you caught us in the lie, no problem. Got it from law enforcement. They got it, they got it from some people from the street. Who, man? What's the game being played? That's why they didn't comply with these statutes. That's why it ain't no entry of record made. That's why ain't nothing on the record. It's all a fraud. It's all a fraud. We don't know how the man was killed. They tell him that Zinkoi got shot with a 9mm kill. We, did we find out that's wrong. Everything about this cause of death is a lie. And I showed y'all in the other video, the jury wanted to know if they could see the autopsy reports. The judge said, no. My jury never even saw the autopsy reports. Either one of them is two of them. They didn't see now one. They didn't get to see one. It's just, it set the, the prosecutor be trusting me. This is what I say. This is what happened. Don't worry about no evidence. Don't worry about no facts. He poor. He don't got no good lawyer. I'm running circles around him, so don't even pay attention. Just listen to me and do what I say. And that's what happened. And that's how they take 18 years of my life. I want, I want to know, man.